How do we get unlimited traffic to your MSP website? And I'm not just saying unlimited traffic, unlimited traffic of your dream customer. And at the end of the day, the recipe that we're gonna be following is quite simple. More traffic means more conversions, which means more leads, which means more sales appointments and more deals. It's that five parts that truly make up an MSP business. And in this, we are going to be talking about getting more traffic to your website, the first part of that. So before we get into it, my name is Harrison Barron from growth-generators.com. We help MSPs grow, whether it's sales training, marketing, or even some business operations. We've been super fortunate to help tons of MSPs and the list keeps on growing. It's been really, really an honor and we love making these videos. If you'd like to have any say in making these videos or what videos we make next, come hang out with us in the Discord. It's a completely free Discord. It's called MSP Heroes. You can go find it from growth-generators.com forward slash Discord. It is probably the most active community in the MSP community, at least, especially between business owners, salespeople, and marketers on the internet. We would love to have you. And I just put up a poll, which is the reason why I'm making these videos. So let's talk about getting your ideal customer to your website. Now, I know I've spent years and years in art school, so you have to just take my Picasso drawing here and my little stick figures down below and the eyeballs here, but we wanna get as many of your dream customers as possible into your world because our goal is to get them to say, hey, let's go visit that website and then they can actually start the process. So in here, you're gonna see that we already have the eyes, we have the person, and we're really fighting for the eyeballs that we need in order to actually grow. But how do we get all of these eyeballs? How do we get an unlimited amount of visitors to our website? Now, they fall into two main areas. They fall into, and I'm gonna draw it up here, we have paid, and my handwriting is awful, I type everything, I apologize, and we have shortly under that, organic, right? We got paid organic. These are the two main categories your traffic can typically fall in. Now paid is just as you hear it. It is taking money from your pocket or from your business and paying another company for exposure. Most of the time that falls into two main categories. We have Google, I apologize about my handwriting again, Google, and we have the good old Facebook, right? Those are gonna be the two main areas. Now, you could pay as much money as you want and get as much exposure as you want from it. But what we really have to talk about is the organic. So I'm gonna just cordon this off here and leave this kind of to the side, but we know that it exists already because you could pay for as much traffic as you'd like. But let's talk about organic. And I'm gonna just move organic over a little bit just so we have a little more room to play around with. But we have, you know what, I'm just gonna make it all. If you want a screenshot, now's the time to take that screenshot of this. All right, let's talk about organic because quite honestly, I don't think you should be paying for traffic and I don't want you to be paying for traffic. But how do we get organically all of these people over here to come visit our website, right? In a previous video I just mentioned, I've talked about how to actually convert them. But you see, we need the traffic to convert them into contacts and leads and appointments and sales. That's the important stuff. But it's all about getting an unlimited number of eyeballs. How do we get these eyeballs? I love organic. One of my favorite ways to do organic traffic is blogging. You can blog to the end of time, and it's all about creating and writing that content. And I'm gonna go into how they, you're gonna create that content and why you're gonna create that content, and the frame of mind you have to have in order to be successful with that content. But we have blogging, we have video, right? We have blogging, we have video. What else do we actually have? In most cases, it's gonna be, right, blogging is reading, video is reading with your eyes and your ears, and then we have audio, right? Now in audio, I'm gonna just do a little parentheses here if you're taking screenshots for podcasting, right? Video, 
Obviously we have YouTube, but social media can 100% fall into that category as well and blogging as well. But the goal of this is to drive all of these areas to your website. Now the blog is going to live on your website. Naturally, people are curious about information. Google, with well-written content that is truly helpful to your target customer, will stumble upon your website. Now, not only that, but Google has been making a massive push to drive video higher in the search results on their platform. Especially as AI comes out and people are using AI to write articles, it's becoming more and more competitive. The interesting part is, is Google's kind of taking a different approach. They're now helping a ton of video. And last but not least, if you're like me and you have a face for radio, the best thing to do is having a podcast. And all of these, by the way, can also live on your website. But you might be thinking, Harrison, well, that's cool. How do these all actually relate to my website, right? And how do we actually get all of the traffic? Well, that's why you should hit the like button if you've made it this far and maybe the subscribe button, notification bell, leave me a comment. Hey, this was super helpful. I'm gonna go blog, I'm gonna go make this content. Whatever it is, it helps me, it helps the algorithm. If you have questions or ideas, leave them down below. I'd love to help out. But how do these topics actually make it to your website? How do we get that traffic to drive over? Because that's really what we want, right? We wanna get as many people, right? I talked about an unlimited number of people coming to your website. So where does that actually exist through this entire process? Well, these are all gonna be driving traffic. Now they're all going to be doing something different, but what I haven't told you yet is why these are actually important, right? We all, I'm sure you probably know, hey, video is the new thing, social media is the big thing, TikTok, Instagram, whatever it might be. Blogging is old school, right? And podcasts are cool, but they're super hard to get found on there. And all of those things could be true or untrue, but we have to take a big step back. These people over here are desperately seeking something, right? I'm gonna just come to this side over here. All of them want something and they're all gonna consume information differently because you might have, believe it or not, tens if not hundreds of thousands of potential customers. And all of those people, remember, they are people, are looking for information in different areas. Some of them might have a long car ride to get to work. Some of them might wanna be entertained or hey, it's part of their job to do research. Or they might be having an issue and they're going to Google to try to troubleshoot that issue and they need to read something in order to follow along. These are the modes in which people consume content. But what we have to think about is how these people, what is their actual thought process behind it? And it's finding and figuring out and understanding your dream customer and what do they actually want, right? Now I've, I've kind of brought this up so I can have a little more room in here, but we, we need to think about what they actually want. I'm just gonna cordon this off with some red here. This is all good and it's, and it's extremely valid, but we need to think about what do these people truly want in order to come to your business? Because they have to think about, they have to have some kind of need, some kind of thought, some kind of question that they need answered. And whether that's a podcast and they're just looking to consume more information or they're, they're, they're specifically thinking about a problem or solution they might need. And it's all about understanding your ideal customer. You see, people buy for four main reasons. Pain in the present, pain in the future, pleasure in the present, and pleasure in the future. They either need something, right? They're, they're, they're afraid that they're gonna be in pain, right? And something's gonna happen, whether that's, you know, CrowdStrike going down, you know, kind of a crazy thing. CrowdStrike having, the, uh, you know, major outages all the way down to something super simple where they can't figure out their x-ray machine in their dental office. And all of these people are all thinking about different questions that you as the expert have answers to. And it's about thinking about what are the true questions that these people are asking to the internet. 
Now, these are how you're going to deliver the information. But people buy based on that pain in the present, pain in the future, pleasure in the uh, pain in the present, pain in the future, pleasure in the present, and pleasure in the future. Right? We have those those four series. But what are they actually searching? They're searching for information. And how they receive that information, once again, is up here. But we need to start thinking about what they actually need. Now, I would love to provide a list of thousands of ideas of what they're actually searching for. But only you, at the end of the day, know your target customer. And the more you know your dream customer, the more information you can create, the more content, the more blogs, the more videos, the more podcasts you can create that would help this person. You see, if they don't need help, they're not going out looking for information. They would probably want to be entertained. In this case, you might want to make your stuff fairly entertaining. But most people are going to find your website because they're searching for help. They're searching for answers. They're searching for the solution to the problem that they're currently having, right? And we already talked about blogging. It's getting found on Google. Video is being indexed higher on Google. And the second largest search engine in the world is the one that you're currently watching this video on, right? If you're listening to the podcast, that's a different story. Or they're listening to stay abreast of what's going on or up to date on what's going on in their world. And you can be the creator of a lot of that content. But we have to think about what are they actually searching for? Now, I want you to think about a couple different ideas before you say, okay, great, Harrison. Well, I gave you the like, I gave you the subscribe, a little hinting towards that. But what are they truly looking for? What solutions do they need help with? What, what problems are they running into? And the more problems, the more thoughts, the more solutions that you can think of for them will then dictate, is it a blog post? Is it a video? Is it a podcast? And going and making those pieces of content. Because blogs are gonna live on your website. Videos can drive people back to your website, right, if they wanna learn more information. And podcasts, quite honestly, the same thing. The blog will just live inside of the website. And you can put videos inside of blogs or podcasts inside of blogs as well. But our goal with infinite traffic coming in is understanding the core questions and problems that people are typing into Google in order to then be the receiver of all of that traffic. And the more information, the more help that you provide to these people, the more traffic, the more tension you're going to get. And just like in my last video, once we get them to the website, we can drive them to a landing page, a page designed to extract their information and provide value to them to then get unlimited leads. But we need unlimited traffic. And it might take you a while. I'd be lying to you if I said it was going to be quick. But the more you know your dream customer, which is why I always tell people to niche down, because the more you're an expert in one area, the more blog posts you can write. You're gonna know about the fancy machines that the architects use or the planning software that they use, right? Whether that's AutoCAD, that could be BIM software, whatever that might actually be. Heck, maybe it's a 3D print farm that you're helping and you know how to troubleshoot Persa 3D printers, right? This is where they're going for the information. They're searching for help. And you have to be the provider of that. Now, fully, full transparency. Most of your traffic isn't going to submit contact information. But the ones that truly need help are going to be the ones that reach out. All of this comes down to math. And I'm going to break that down in a future video, so you're going to want to subscribe to the channel. The more traffic that you get, whether it's from blog posts, videos, or your um, podcast, in this case audio, right, is going to dictate how many leads you actually get. We need to think about what our dream customer, right, our extremely well-drawn stick figures here, is truly searching for on the internet. And once we do that, we can drive them over to our website, which is going to result in more leads, more contacts, and more sales. So I hope you guys found some value in this video. I wanted to go through it because a lot of you guys are like, hey, how do I make the content? Think about what your dream customer is truly struggling with. Provide them with that. And that is where you are going to ultimately end up succeeding. 
Hope you guys found value in this video. If you did, like button, subscribe button, notification bell, hang out with us in the Discord server, growth-generators.com forward slash Discord, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.